Now that we've taken a look at Kramer's rule, let's take a look at the Gauss elimination method. Just like the Kramer's rule, we need to input a matrix A and a solution vector B. We'll need the length of A once again in our calculations. And I'll put a round bracket in the beginning of the function so that we can close it off at the end. Now let's think about how Gauss elimination works. Our goal is to create an upper triangular matrix using matrix row operations. The raw operations affect both A and B. So the logical first step to make the rest of the calculations easier is to combine them into a matrix G. Since inserting B directly into A will add it as a row, we need to first transpose A. Then we can insert B into the last position. And then we have to transpose back. Now we need to create our upper triangular matrix. To do so, we need to create pivots through subtraction. We need to do subtraction based on the pivot and the value of the elements below it along the same column. So we'll need two increments in order to do our subtractions. The first increment we'll need for the columns that we're subtracting along. The second increment we'll need for the rows we are subtracting from. Since, for each iteration, we're doing all our calculations under the same column number, we can set our first increment k inside of a for loop. Then, since we need another increment that takes all of the rows below k for subtraction, we can put a do loop with our second increment i inside of the for loop. So just scrolling down to give us some more space. and we'll start with k equals 1. Keep going so long as k is less than or equal to n and keep increasing k. Now we want to set up our do loop. Our new increment i will start from the row below k and go all the way until the end of the matrix. Now for the body of our do loop, we'll use the formula up here from our online nodes. So we need to set g of i equal to g of i minus g of i comma k divided by g of k comma k times g of k. And notice what this formula does is it sets the value of g of i to 0 based on the pivot value. Now I'll just erase our picture here so that we have more room to work with. Now that we have our upper triangular matrix, we need to do backward substitution. This requires an increment that starts from n and goes back to 1, and then uses the back substitution formula from our notes. The formula requires a sum, so we'll need to utilize the sum function. We're going to want to store our solutions in a matrix, so we can go ahead and define a matrix of zeros to make our lives easier. And here it'll be useful to use the table function, since the length of our vector will be dependent on n. But first, let's remember to close this for loop. And now that we have an empty vector set up, 
we can use a for loop with an increment that goes backwards from n all the way back to 1 to do our backward substitution. So for i equals n, as long as i is greater than or equal to 1, set i to i minus 1. Now in our body, we'll use the back substitution formula and store it inside of xi. So xi is equal to g of i, comma n plus 1, minus the sum of g of i, comma l, times x of l, where l goes from i plus 1 to n, just like the sum we have up here and divide that by g of i comma i. Close that round bracket. And don't forget our semicolon. And finally, we want our output to be x. Shift enter to initiate the function. All right, we went through a lot of work just to define that function. Now let's test it with the identity matrix. Now once again, because this is the identity matrix, our solution should just be B. Shift enter. Now whenever we get this tag times error, it's most likely because we forgot a semicolon. And now if we look at our function up here, we did indeed forget a semicolon after the do loop. So insert that right now. Shift enter and our fingers crossed. And as a result, we got the expected answer of 1, 2, and 3. Now, this code will do the naive gauze elimination without switching rows, so that means we can't use it with any zero pivots. Error checking this is a bit more complicated than error checking our Kramer's rule code, so I'll quickly do a rundown of how it'll work. We'll need an if statement that prints an error message and stops the for loop if a zero pivot is found. So an if statement will be needed inside of this for loop. If we look at the first for loop, it stops when k is greater than n. So we can use that to our advantage in order to force the for loop to stop once we've found a zero pivot. In order to print an error message, we'll need a flag that changes value once a zero pivot is found. So here, we need both an if statement and a flag. A second if statement will then have to check the value of the flag and trigger an error message if the flag is unacceptable. So that second if statement would go around here. And that second if statement checks the flag and prints an error message if it's an unacceptable value. Otherwise, it proceeds to do the rest of the procedure here. So we went over how to program the Kramer's rule and naive gauze elimination methods for solving linear systems of equations. We also briefly went over how to error check both functions that we programmed. That's it for this tutorial, and once again, good luck with your labs.